Over the next year, we're going to see a tremendous uptick in performance for Xbox Series titles, as game developers are able to unleash what this system is truly capable of. And in this video, we're going to be detailing exactly why that is, and also touching on aspects of the machine, such as mesh shaders and the bring up of the console. Now, if you've been a gamer for any length of time, you'll know the story. When a new generation of consoles is launched, launch titles never look as good as games which are released like a year or two years later. It was the same story, for example, with the Xbox 360. Perfect Dark and Gears 1, they look, well, totally different from one another. And looking at Sony's machine, the PlayStation 3, it's hard to believe that The Last of Us ever could run on the PlayStation 3. It almost seemed like it had no business running the game, and yet it did. And this is, of course, because with fixed hardware platforms, developers are forced to learn programming tricks. They are forced to squeeze the juice out of the lemon, and of course, SDKs and development kits themselves evolve and improve. But, yeah, if we look at the Xbox Series X, it's a fascinating system. On paper, it's monstrous. It's impressive even by the standards of many gaming PCs. Eight CPU cores based on the Zen 2 architecture, 12.1 TFLOPs of GPU performance using RDNA 2, again an AMD IP, tons of RAM, and also a pretty snappy SSD to boot. I guess technically it is to boot as it's literally booting off of it. That was an actually unintended pun. Anyway, but there has been something we've noticed, and that is that many games on the uh, Xbox Series X seem to be underperforming compared to that of the PlayStation 5. Frame rates in particular seem to be less stable, and even resolution sometimes is dipping behind it. One of the key titles we saw this early on with was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And yeah, it is getting better. Resolution targets in particular now seem to be slowly tipping towards the favor of Xbox, although frame rate is still kind of up in the air. So as the situation starts to resolve itself, there's a question. What exactly is causing this? And also, will it get better in the future? And of course, perhaps just as crucially, what about features such as mesh shaders? And what exactly is the tools meme about? Back late last year, I discussed why, after speaking to a developer or two, Assassin's Creed Valhalla seemed to be a more stable experience on Sony's machine. It wasn't the only title. But yeah, what was going on? Of course, hardware performance of consoles is very important, but to my understanding at the time, it was also coming down to software development, game engines, and yes, I hate to say this, of course, tools. There are a number of things we have to talk about here in this video, but perhaps the most exciting topic, mesh shaders, we'll get to in a moment. Firstly, let's talk about the bring up of the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. It's my belief that Microsoft had less time to develop their software and toolkit as well as other aspects of the system, partly because they received the chips later than Sony for the development kits. Sony started handing out dev kits to their first party studios early part of 2019, at least to my understanding. And while certain features were not functioning, such as hardware-based ray tracing, which would, if enabled, cause the silicon to crash, this is one of the reasons that early PlayStation 5 tests we saw leak from GitHub were running with uh, hardware-based ray tracing disabled. At least developers, though, could start to understand the fundamentals of the PlayStation 5. And while the PlayStation 5's GPU is based on RDNA 2 IP, such as the compute units of the GPU, Sony abandoned many aspects of the desktop implementation to include their own custom tweaks, such as the geometry engine. Microsoft, though, had a very different approach to the bring up than Sony, necessitated by Xbox titles also being released on their Windows-based PCs too. So, in Microsoft's own words, at least to paraphrase them, they needed a feature set which would be universal with DirectX 12 as the base, hardware-based ray tracing, mesh shaders, variable rate shading, and finally sampler feedback, all able to run using the DirectX 12 API. This would allow easy porting of titles from the Xbox to PC hardware, assuming, of course, the PC was outfitted with the appropriate graphics card in a way so you could take advantage of, let's say, uh, variable rate shading. So an RTX 20, RTX 30, or Radeon RX 6000 series card was required. 
None of this is meant to be a debate of which approach, either Sony or Microsoft, is better. Both have their positives and negatives. However, it is to say that definitely delays did affect Microsoft and their timeline. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll also know that last year I was reporting that Sony were ahead of Microsoft when it came to MP, mass production, i.e. their consoles were being manufactured earlier than Microsoft. And the reason that I was hearing that this was the case actually wasn't to do with like hardware necessarily, it was software. Basically the uh, drivers, particularly for the GPU and I think some OS stuff as well, were holding Microsoft back and basically needed to do some last minute refinements and tweaks before the system could basically be assembled and finished off and all of that. Indeed, this was also at a time Microsoft made rather large changes to the SDK, which Richard Leadbetter from Digital Foundry had previously reported on. Basically, Microsoft was moving towards a GDK environment, which in the long run would be better, but in the short term anyway, it was challenging to developers. Essentially, the PlayStation 5, meanwhile, was being praised because it was super easy to develop for, something I also heard as well. Basically, you can think of this as a mixture of building on what was already well understood, the PlayStation 4 tools being updated for the PlayStation 5, and, of course, developers already having more time with the PS5 hardware. Microsoft received their development kits later, and while, again, I do think GDK was a right move for Microsoft, short-term pain for longer-term goals, this was yet another issue developers had to face and contend with. Please understand, I'm not trying to take anything away from Sony's efforts here. Far from it, I think Sony did a commendable, stellar job with their software and communication with developers. And I am still missing pieces of Xbox and how it was brought up, but I am more confident than ever that Microsoft faced a number of challenges, and they are getting there though, but I don't want to go too much deeper in console bring up, as I'll be tackling it much more exhaustively on the channel soonish with a series. But what about mesh shaders then? Well, yeah, let's quickly go over what a mesh shader is so we all have a basic fundamental understanding of what we're talking about. This will be a quick overview. I'll be putting out a much more extensive video soon on the inner workings of a mesh shader, which I'm working with NVIDIA on, so subscribe if you're interested in that. My understanding that is so far that games on the Xbox, which are currently released, none of them, so first party or third party, are leveraging mesh shaders. And this is to say that titles are apparently starting to income this year, and as of right now, mesh shaders are not currently being used on the Xbox Series X or S, or for that matter, any PC hardware. This means that there's huge amount of performance, especially in geometry performance, of course, which we can expect to see from upcoming titles. But let's analyze this a little deeper. The gist is that a mesh shader is a complete reworking of the geometry pipeline in graphics. Modern day GPUs are essentially a collection of thousands, many thousands, of simple-ish processors, and these all come together to form a task. A mesh shader then really is a direct way of accessing what the GPU really is, an ultra powerful series of processors, rather than pushing the old geometry pipeline on this new paradigm. So with mesh shaders, developers are essentially issuing compute commands to the GPU, and this is much more flexible, allowing much more pipeline efficiency compared to the traditional geometry pipeline. Again, I want to stress that this is a heavily simplified answer, and I am glazing over a ton of technical details, but mesh shaders are significantly more performant. How much of a performance leap? Well, as you can see from these synthetic results in a Radeon RX 6800 XT, thanks AMD for providing the card, there is a big leap in performance between these two results using a mesh shader benchmark. Mesh shader on versus, well, not having it on. Well, let's explore this a little deeper though, because it's more nuanced than this. 3 Mark's mesh shader results are a best case scenario for testing. And in reality, games are likely to be significantly less of a jump in performance over a traditional pipeline. But as Microsoft themselves showed in a recent demo, well, you can see yourself. The rendering time is drastically reduced with far more effective and efficient culling. Further to this, notice this result. 
which is the same test, albeit run on older AMD drivers. This was the uh, driver release before the uh, driver, which was updated to uh, fully support mesh shader, at least the benchmark. To be clear, nothing else has changed here. No settings, no hardware, no overclocking. It's just the graphics driver. Again, console performance jumps aren't really going to come from driver updates, at least this significant, now that the hardware itself is actually released. Instead, what I'm using this for is to perhaps illustrate that driver, SDK, and OS is just as important as the actual underlying specs of the hardware, which is another reason I do speak so much about uh, development tools and optimization. But getting back to mesh shaders versus traditional pipeline and the performance jump we can see there, well, there's a few things. Firstly, mesh shaders themselves are a pretty big departure from the traditional current pipeline. And this leads to a few things. Firstly, not all games will adopt or need to adopt mesh shaders. If your game is fairly basic 3D affair, or perhaps you're not pushing a ton of geometry or straining the console, why put in the extra work? Sure, you know, technically speaking, it would be more efficient, but why do it if you're not straining the system anyway? There's just no point in putting in that additional coding work. Mesh shaders then aren't for simpler looking games and work, yes, especially in the early stages as it is a steep learning curve, will be required to probably means that large studios such as think EA or Ubisoft will likely be the first to embrace this tech. Mesh shaders are not simple as just having like a box that a developer can tick and then it says click here for free performance, you click it and that's it. No, it takes time for the developer to learn this and effort to understand mesh shading. And it can be complicated example, such as say shader material systems. I assume Microsoft will be the first to push out titles with mesh shading. Here's hoping that Halo Infinite example has mesh shader support on PC with a toggle so we can actually see how well it does on comparably the same hardware. We have seen Microsoft do this with Gears 5 and Variable Rate Shading Tier 2. Although VRS has been around before that on PC with Wolfenstein Youngblood, albeit it was utilizing NVIDIA's Adaptive Shaders instead, or NAS. I'll also throw in that developer kits and profile, again, to my understanding, have come a very long way over the past few months. And it's going to really help, of course, titles going forward. Games take years to develop, so titles adapting their pipelines from older generation hardware to the early window of next gen have never been, well, the most optimized in terms of new hardware performance. And while I realize this video is probably going to spark a ton of debates between PlayStation 5 and Xbox, it really is not intended to compare the two systems at all. There's a significant difference between the API and development kit, as well as hardware of both systems. Sony does not use the mesh shader pipeline. Instead, they opted to create their own custom geometry engine, which again uses its own entirely separate API, which is based on primitive shaders, albeit customized for Sony. The geometry engine, therefore, can left, be left alone to do its own thing, as Mark Cerny said during the Road to PS5 event, but careful manipulation of the GE can, well, it can lead to very impressive results particularly for VR. Given Sony has had their development kits longer than Microsoft now, it's probable that many first-party studios at the least are experimenting with the geometry engine. At the very least, you would imagine. The PlayStation 5's own OS and development kits are also not stagnant, and Microsoft, well, they will be competing with Sony for the improvement of its tools. I might also cover this, particularly the geometry engine and its relationship to VR, more in depth in the future. But yeah, I think that this video is best to really focus on the Xbox. Ultimately, we are still very early in the console life cycle. You know, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series of systems have not even been out as of the time I'm recording this, six months. So it is still very early. And I'm actually feeling quite positive about this generation, not just because of more T-flops, but also because of the fundamental aspects of this generation which are changing, such as the SSD. And I do think that 
you know, phrases such as game changer are cliche and overused at this point, but I truly do believe that when developers do get a handle on how the SSD can really be brought to bear on next generation titles, we're going to see some impressive and incredible stuff. And yeah, I think that's going to be the same about all of the aspects of these systems. Hardware-based ray tracing is often, you know, just really attributed to quite nice looking puddles, but that really is not the only thing that ray tracing can do. And you can use ray tracing more subtly, for example, improving AI or even more advanced audio. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how these consoles evolve. Um, I've mentioned multiple times now, you know, throughout the history of this channel, that really both consoles, they do things very differently. Of course, at the end of the day, they do play games and they are gonna run cross-platform titles with one game perhaps being better on the Xbox and the other being better on the PlayStation. But the reality is that both designs are actually quite different from one another with Microsoft's wider design focusing on pure compute performance and Sony's design being more throughput based. That is a vast over simpler simplification, excuse me, of the, um, you know, the situation. But I truly do believe that both are gonna be really important. From my perspective as primarily a PC gamer, I think that the Series X is going to be the linchpin of perhaps, or more accurately, I suppose, the cornerstone of what we can expect for PC titles going forward. Uh, as DirectX is going to be updated for PC soon, uh, which includes sampler feedback. And I feel that this is going to be of critical importance for PC GPUs, of course, as we move towards the era of SAM, smart access memory, and being able to like bring across a huge chunks of data at a time. Not to mention, there are still a lot of questions on the PC side of things, given not all PCs are outfitted with super fast SSDs, but you know, that's, that's a question for another time. With that said though, if you have enjoyed the video, of course, subscribe to the channel. There'll be a lot of extra content coming up over the next uh, couple of weeks or so, including a uh, pretty in-depth uh, uh, discussion of mesh shaders from NVIDIA. I'm also organizing an interview or two, which will be pretty cool. And there'll be a couple of PlayStation exclusives as well, including some really in-depth uh, discussion on the PlayStation 5's VR and how it pertains uh, to uh, the geometry engine. So I think you'll find that kind of interesting too. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.